Good evening and welcome. My name is Adriana Rarisic, or as the students know me, Miss R. I am the chaplaincy leader at St. Thomas Aquinas. Tonight is an exciting night, and we at STA share in your excitement for this moment. This night is about our graduates, your children, and it is also about you, the parents and guardians. You have helped them get to this moment and see them on this important threshold between high school and their adult lives. I'm sure it has been a rewarding journey supporting your children to this moment, though not without some challenges. Just a few reminders before we begin. First, get comfortable there with your families in your living rooms, family rooms, or wherever you have gathered as a family to celebrate your graduate. Our virtual graduation ceremony will be quite the event. We will begin with mass, and as you can see, a small group of us are gathered here at St. Andrews. Thank you, Father Kahn and the parishioners of St. Andrews Parish for celebrating this moment with us. Thank you also, Father Kahn, for supporting STA with your pastoral presence and friendship. A special welcome to all watching. You are here with us in spirit. It has been a challenging year and a half and certainly not the way you, our graduates, wanted your high school experience to end. From what we have witnessed of you through all of this is that no matter how tough life can get, you are tougher. You continue to show up and rise above these circumstances. Yes, it was difficult, but you did it. It is fitting we begin with Mass to celebrate what God has done in us, for us, and with us, and will continue to do. We are instruments of God's peace, compassion, healing, reconciliation, and friendship. We love because God first loved us. Let us set aside any worries and distractions that are within us. Let us be mindful that God is here and connecting us all through our living rooms. And let us give thanks and praise as we always do as Raider Nation. Please stand for a processional hymn. Hello everyone and welcome to St. Andrew's Church for this uh, graduation liturgy. Last year when we gathered here to uh, celebrate this Mass, we were not expecting to be back in the same situation a year later, uh, but here we are. Um, so you can join us from the comfort of your uh, living room, uh, but it's lovely having some of the graduating students uh, here to celebrate with us as well as the uh, staff, senior staff of the school. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, we give praise and thanks to God. That's the meaning of the word Eucharist, Eucharistia, to give praise and thanks. For the times when we may not have been as grateful as we could, we ask the Lord's pardon and peace.
Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to, to, to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, at whose bidding the seed will sprout and the shoot grow toward full stature, hear the prayers of your assembled people. Make us trust in your hidden ways, that we may pray with confidence and wait for your kingdom now growing in our midst. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And let us be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia for during a severe ordeal of affliction. Their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For, as I can testify, they voluntarily gave, according to their means and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, and gave themselves first to the Lord and by the will of God to us, so we might urge Titus that, as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is God who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. Praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. It is the Lord who loves the just, but for 
towards the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. Zion's God, from age to age, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord. Please be seated. I promise I shall try to make this as short and painless as possible. Uh, one of the, I think one of the good things about the pandemic experience is that when, when everybody comes back to church, um, they'll find that the homilies have gotten shorter, not longer, which, which, will be, which will be helpful. So, so I have two little thoughts that I would like to, uh, uh, to leave with you. And both of them actually come to us from, um, from the scriptures. The first is... Um, comes from the last part of the, that lovely gospel passage that we heard about letting your light shine. No one uh, lights a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket. They let it, put it on the stand so that everybody can see it. And of course, that makes sense. It, it's common sense. But you and I all know that sometimes common sense is in short supply. Um, for anybody who's been observing what's happening in the world over the last year and a bit, uh, you notice that we have become divided very, very quickly. And strong opinions, often crazy opinions, uh, become the rule of the day. I, I um, was standing in line at the grocery store on Sunday afternoon. Why I was there on Sunday afternoon is something you can check on 
uh, later. But I was standing in line, and there was a gentleman in front of me, and uh, he was speaking to somebody on uh, the telephone, and he was telling his friend that he was hoping to be able to go to Mount Rushmore in the United States uh, uh, in July because the former president of the United States is going to be reinstated as the president of the United States at Mount Rushmore in July. Common sense can sometimes seem to be in short supply. So letting your light shine, what does that mean? What does, and what does it mean to, to live as someone who allows their light to shine? I think uh, the clue comes in the first part of the gospel, where Jesus is speaking to the disciples, and he's, he's using metaphors for them, and he's, he's, uh, as he's speaking to them, he's telling them how he would hope they would behave, how they would live in the world. And he's saying to them, live in the world, as people who are plugged in to what's happening in the world. Don't let your attitudes, don't let your values, don't let your hope and hopes and dreams disappear uh, in, in the torrent of, of uh, fake news. Be careful to attend to coming to fully know and fully appreciate who you are as the person that God has created. And here in um, the word of God, the voice of God, the, the experience of God, the command to be the best version of yourself that you can be. But more than that, be like salt that brings flavor. Live your life always with the task, with the purpose of bringing to everything that you, uh, uh, that you are going to embark on, every journey, every person that you meet, bring some of that flavor with you. And it's interesting. It, it, because you add salt. And if you're a good cook, you know that you add salt at the beginning of the cooking process and you add it at the end of the process. It's not just once. It's not just once. I, there's a, Mary Jo Letty is a professor. She, I'm not sure that she still teaches in Toronto at the University of Toronto, but... Um, she taught in the philosophy department, and she has a line which I love to quote, and the line is, say to the darkness, you have no power over me. And when you find the urge to, to go into that dark place, remember that. Say to the darkness, you have no power over me. Say to the craziness, say to the craziness, you have no power over me. <laughs> you have no power because, because I am confident in myself, because I, because I, have, I have strength in the knowledge that, that I, created in the image and likeness of God, have been called to do good. I have been called to bring salt to the earth, Um, just one last little point on, on the first point. Um, if you ever find yourself in uh, Western Australia, there's a uh, which is one of the most magical places in the world. It's got the most amazing um, geological, but also marine life. Uh, people say that if you want to if you want to have a vision of what life was life at, the, in, at, at its earliest stages, go there. Because especially in the afternoon and the evening, you will see it in the, in the floor of the ocean when the tide 
uh, when the tide is out. But one of the most magical things that happens is that as the moon, I'm sorry, as the sun falls down, there's a flash of light. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's big, it's huge, it's this big, it's a blinding, almost a blinding flash. And many of the, the native peoples um, of, of the area would say that it was the mother giving a wink that she was going for a rest, but I will be back. In other words, the sun is going down to rest, but, it, but after the rest, it's going to come back and it's going to bring life and light and salt and hope and dreams are with it. So that's the first point. And I guess the second point comes from the first reading uh, where I'm sure some of you are saying, what? What is Paul talking about? Can't he write in meat and potato language? Um, what, what is he talking about? I think if you go back over the text again, it's a lovely reading for the times that we live in, actually. Because it is very easy to sort of throw your hands up in the air and say, oh, what's the point? What's the, what, what's the point? Um, it's been bad news for a year and a half. And what Paul, is, what Paul is saying is the opposite, actually. He's saying, but don't you hear the good news? And I don't want to put a burden on those of you who are graduating from high school, uh, but if you look at the world, if you look at the history of pandemics in the world, each experience has led to one of the most important cultural moments in history, one after the other. And you graduate standing on the threshold of this brand new experience. I was talking to my sister and my brother-in-law yesterday who live in England, and they were talking about the businesses that both of them are, are involved in, my sister in finance, uh, her husband uh, in, in politics. Um, and um, they were talking about how the changes that they're beginning to see in their work and in their work environment are changes for the good. And actually, my brother-in-law made a very interesting point. He said that successive generation, that successive uh, groups of graduates from university over the last several years have been saying to their elders, you gotta change the way you're doing things because it's killing you. <laughs> and finally, those who are in the position to make the changes are beginning to say, maybe they were saying something very wise to us. And maybe that's the change that we're beginning to see. So, so as you go off into the brave, wonderful world of of ongoing education, ongoing life experiences. Bring, your, bring your, your hopes and your dreams. Be the salt and be the light uh, into, your next, uh, into this next journey of adventure uh, that you're going to want. And realize that you are going to contribute in a very unique way um, to what the world is going to look like for the next period of our history. Please stand and let us now join in the intercessions. <clears throat> the response is Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, for courage to be authentic in the face of injustices of our world. For humility in addressing injustices from the past. For a firm resolve to practice what we preach. 
for integrity to live what and how we preach, to lead the way in truth, healing, reconciliation, restorative justice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, for leaders of all nations, that they may turn faithfully to the values of the golden rule, building peace among nations for peace in our broken world, and for the safety of all who have dedicated their lives for building up of peace by giving their lives in service of others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, the graduates of 2021, for perseverance in the face of adversity, for resilience in these times of uncertainty, that we may recognize our purpose and calling, for our witness of the gospel values wherever we may find ourselves. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents and families, for their love that shapes us and guides us, for all family members who cannot be with us, yet support us wherever they are. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and all staff at STA who have guided us in our education, for the power of their witness that influenced us and will influence the generations to follow. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died this past year, for those who have died due to COVID or other causes, for all those who must mourn them, may the souls of the faithful departed rest in God's peace. May those who are mourning know God's gentle, healing presence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, with grateful hearts, we proclaim your love in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night. Be our rock and strength at all times through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise to you, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. You have given us a new birth. By the resurrection of your Son from the dead, you Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and with all those who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. amen. 
and let us pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and pray f- always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, full of sorrow, they shall be consoled. Rejoice and be glad, blessed are you, holy are you, rejoice. Say it are you, oh. 
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful graduation, everybody. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to your parents, to the staff at, uh, at the school. Remember, keep that light burning brightly, and you have to season your food twice, at the beginning and the end. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go, the Mass is ended. by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear. Him who spoke as man who spoke, but we believe him near. Be not by faith and hands and sight, nor follow where he trod, yet in his brothers we rejoice in Christ. Good evening, class of 2021. I'm excited to be able to say a few words to you tonight and help you celebrate this great evening. I'd like to start by thanking your parents, guardians. You've entrusted your sons and daughters to us, in some cases, for 14 years. That's a long haul. Congratulations to you for where your sons and daughters are this evening. And thank you for continuing to support both them and our system throughout the years. To all of our school staff, we've asked a lot of you over the past two years. You've risen to the challenge. In every way possible, you've provided excellence in Catholic education, while at the same time nurturing a call to love and serve in our students. And that's what our vision of Catholic education is here in Halton. Finally, to our graduating class of 2021. I know this is not the way you would hope your graduation would turn out, but here's where we are. I want to thank you and continue to encourage you to be leaders in your community, in your classrooms, in your workplaces as you leave us. Events over the past few weeks in Canada have certainly indicated we need excellent Catholic leaders to emerge from this graduating class. And I'm confident that you'll be those leaders. So thank you again, congratulations, I wish you all the best in the future. God bless you. Congratulations, graduates of St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Secondary School. What an honor it is to be speaking to you on your graduation day. To parents and staff, families and friends, thank you for providing the support and guidance over these many years that has fostered the success of our fine young men and women. As I reflect on the graduates 
of our famed St. Thomas Aquinas history, and I think of our current graduates of 2021. I remain as excited for the future as ever. You will venture into all kinds of worlds, at times eye-opening, in other moments challenging, but consistent throughout will be the joys of achievement, perseverance, and reward. I can promise you that over the next several years, you will not always get what you expect. Certainly, this is not the graduation celebration any one of us would have wanted for you. Our hearts and compassion go out to you. However, it is this adversity that will make you stronger and better prepare you to accomplish great things in life. Approach every adversity as an opportunity. Continue to be an agent of change. Be an advocate and a champion for equity and inclusion against racism and all forms of discrimination and sexism. Be a steward of the earth. Fight against climate change. Care for the sick and the elderly. Show love, empathy, and compassion for all, and especially those who are less fortunate and most vulnerable. Do not forget why God put you on this earth. You are all called to serve. Understand that your purpose in life is to leave whatever you touch better than when you found it. Leave your mark in a positive, loving, and unforgettable way. It is amazing how the more generous you are and the more you choose to serve others, the happier you will be. Continue to learn in knowledge, character, and humility. Be curious and be open to others whose interests may differ from yours. Read and learn something new every day. Be resilient, learn from your errors, and celebrate each other's accomplishments. Congratulations, and may God continue to bless you, the graduating class of 2021. At this time, I would like to call upon Mr. Maximus Gorgi to make a short welcoming address on behalf of the graduates. Welcome, family members, teachers and staff, special guests, and our graduating class, the 2021 St. Thomas Aquinas graduation ceremony. In a time where the future is uncertain, it is important to stay fast in the faith and trust in the process that Christ has uniquely laid out for each of us. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Our final two years have not been at all what we imagined for ourselves. We dealt with social restrictions, changes to our school days, and I missed out on many graduation memories. My welcome message today is that we can all be hopeful and excited for the journey ahead that awaits each and every single one of us. We should be thankful for the love and support of family and friends, as well as the support and hard work of our beloved SCA staff who worked tirelessly to help us through these uncharted times of COVID-19. Michael Josephson, attorney at law, once said, take pride in how far you've come, have faith in how far you can go, but don't forget to enjoy the journey. And so although there are a few bumps in the road, it is still important for us to be grateful for this journey of ours and what it has taught us. I'd like to take a moment to thank our special guests, Father Khan and Mr. Anthony Cordeo for their support tonight, as well as the people who facilitated and organized the graduation drive through and this virtual meeting. We have much to look forward to as we embark on the next part of our journey. And while our time together at St. Thomas Aquinas is coming to a close, it is not over quite just yet. Despite us not being in the same room together, I'd like to welcome you all once more to tonight's event. So with, without further ado, let us get this 2021 graduation ceremony started with a big cheer and excitement for all that we've accomplished. Thank you. Father Khan, Mr. DeRosa, Mrs. Guzzo, our Oakville trustees, Mr. Cordero, STA's family school superintendent, honored guests, parents, fellow staff members, and graduates. As a principal and on behalf of St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Secondary School, it is with great pride that I welcome you to an event which honors the achievement of our fine young graduates. 
the amazing and resilient class of 2021. Father Khan, I wish to thank you for presiding at our ceremony. Your ongoing support of the SCA community in person and virtually exemplifies the continuing support given by our clergy to Catholic education in our diocese and in our board. Father Khan, you continue to be a resource and pillar of support for our students and staff. Anytime we reach out, you step in the batter's box and do what you do best. Hit a home run in your homilies and messages and always find time to create a safe and inclusive environment for everyone. Tonight's ceremony marks the conclusion of another interesting and challenging school year for students and staff. To those who work tirelessly on behalf of our students, we acknowledge your efforts. To the members of the Halton Catholic School Board and its chair, Mr. Patrick Murphy, trustees, Mr. DeRosa and Ms. Guzel, our director, Mr. Daly, our family of schools, superintendent, Mr. Anthony Cordero, we thank you for your support. To Father Khan, Father Louis, and Father Ranjan, who have presided at our school masses over the last four years, and the clergy at all our parishes, thank you for your spiritual support and dedication to our school. To our school council, we thank you parents for your support and commitment to St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Secondary School. To the teaching staff of STA, the vice principals, Mrs. Montanari, Ms. Serafin, Mr. Montoya, and Mr. McDougall, I salute you for your commitment to Catholic education, your flexibility, and your dedication to our students. You have provided a safe and nurturing environment for our students during the challenging school year, and you continue to look for opportunities to allow our students to grow and prosper in their educational experience. To our chaplain, Ms. Rarisich, who has willingly taken on countless roles this school year to foster community and be our spiritual leader. From videographer, talk show host, tech support, and of course, chaplain, you have worked tirelessly and enthusiastically to make STA a safe and welcoming environment for all students. You've gone above and beyond in your role. Thank you for your energy and humor and for being so gracious in your spiritual guidance. To the parents and families of our school, we acknowledge, especially this school year, the sacrifices you have made to educate your children in the context of a Catholic community and your patience and understanding during such stressful times. Thank you. What would a graduation be if not to offer the graduates a few pearls of wisdom? First and foremost, be a catalyst for change. If the last year and a half has taught us anything, it is that our youth have the voice and influence to challenge the norms in society. I implore you to continue to seek healthy and progressive change in our world and embrace the opportunities you encounter to make a difference. I challenge you to use your knowledge and understanding of your faith in God, combine it with the very best values your parents, your guardians, and your mentors have instilled in you, and put these into action. Second, never underestimate the power of your words or your actions. With one small gesture or comment, you can change a person's day, their self-worth, and their outlook on life. Be aware of the difference between intent and impact of your words and actions. God puts us all in each other's lives to impact one another in some way. Look for God in others and look for good in others. As the gospel tells us this evening, be a light in our world and bring flavor to your aspirations in life. Share your personality and God-given talents with the world. Last, hopefully more than achievements or accolades you may receive in the future, the basic values of kindness, decency, love, and goodness will inform your choices you make in life. That would be the highest tribute you can pay to those who have supported you all these years. Graduation is not an ending, but a transition from one phase of life to another. It is in many ways a beginning. Graduation was one of the proudest moments as educators. Remembering you entering grade nine as young adolescents, getting to know you, helping you learn and grow and encouraging you to be the best that you could be, and now seeing you as more mature young yet adults reminds us all how quickly these years have passed. We pray that this night and all those that follow will be the continuation of lives that are productive and exemplary. We pray that you will always use the knowledge gained at STA for the betterment of your lives and those of your fellow human beings. We pray that this graduation may be the prologue of happy and fulfilling days to come. 
To the class of 2021, I congratulate you for your efforts and your achievements. Your presence at SDA has been woven into the very fabric of its history, and you will be remembered. Who can forget this year? Good luck to you, and may the Lord continue to bless you and your families in the years ahead. Congratulations on a job well done. Being chosen as a valedictorian of your graduating class by your peers is an exceptional honor. This year, the graduating class has chosen Ms. Alessandra Ishak to deliver the valedictory address. I invite Alessandra to please come forward and address the graduating class. Netflix is definitely a fan favorite when it comes to shows and movies. I mean, you'd be lying if you said you'd never spent a bit too long binge watching shows. But when it comes to the series based on teens, they need a bit of work. For starters, the cast either looks 12 or 25, no in between. And on top of that, the whole dynamic of high school is so far from reality. This is exactly why I think it's time that Netflix creates a documentary series based on what high school is really like. So, what better story than the story of our graduating class? Get this, the title would be Alessandra and her class. Just kidding, of course. I think High School Unfiltered Pandemic Edition is extremely fitting. Welcome to the graduating class of 2021 and good evening to Father Khan, Superintendent Cordero, trustees, Mr. Prusen in administration, parents, and friends. Thank you all for being here with me today. I hope you are all comfortable and that your volume is at the perfect setting. Now, let's get into it. Season one is the season that everyone tells their friends, don't worry, it gets better, I swear. As you may have guessed, season one is based on grade nine. Upon arrival at STA, we discovered some unique rules, to say the least. The most unique of all was the water bottle flip ban. As well as that, new uniforms were made and kilts were banned just in time for our arrival at STA. This, combined with our habit of grouping together in the middle of the second floor, made us easily depictable as Niners. We soon discovered the irrational embarrassment that comes with wearing a jacket or winter boots, or even worse, bringing an umbrella to school. As well as that, we learned how awkward it is to walk around the school waiting for your friends to arrive in the morning. A defining moment for many of us that year was spring fling. For those of you who attended, I don't think I have to say much more. And for those of you who didn't, count your blessings. Next up, is season two coming in strong, grade 10. This is the time in our lives when many of us really begin to feel the community here at STA. We finally knew our way around the school and didn't have to worry about getting lost in the halls or walking into the wrong class. There were lots of memorable events this year, such as the pink game, Relay for Life, the inside ride, and of course, an insane amount of snow days and bus cancellations. A huge shout out goes to Mark Lee for all of his weather updates and predictions. This is also the year we prepared and stressed about the OSSLT, but we are all here today and that stress is truly behind us now. Moving on to season three, grade 11. This is the time in high school where things began to shift. We were given lots of freedom when it came to course selection and this impacted us more than we knew. All those waiting to take grade 11 healthcare finally could. On dissection day, you all spammed your stories with videos and pictures of things that those of us who didn't take healthcare didn't want to see. You all had the opportunity to dissect pig hearts, chicken feet, and lamb brain. We, not a part of the class, had the opportunity to hear about it for the rest of the year. 
Similarly, everyone who took outdoor ed has a like pride in having taken the class. We know portaging was hard. We know you couldn't shower, and we know about the beach incident. Us who took physics, whether we needed it or just didn't know what it was, we're surprised to find out that there's more to the course than knowing 9.81 meters per second squared is acceleration due to gravity. The different classes we took created a basis of many of the connections we made with our classmates. Those of us in physics had the opportunity to bond over our shared tears. Jokes aside, grade 11 threw obstacles at us that only scientists could have predicted. Thursday, March 12, 2020. The date we received an announcement that schools will be shut down for an additional two weeks. Well, school definitely closed for two weeks. During this time, many of us had shared experiences apart. We watched the Tiger King, made whipped coffee, and felt relieved to hear that our marks could not drop below midterms. Though, some of us wished we took our harder courses in second semester. We stayed in touch through Netflix party nights and socially distanced meetups. The way our bonds didn't break goes to show our resilience as a class. Now, that brings us to our final written season, season four. This year brought up new challenges for all of us. For the first time in our lives, online learning was a staple throughout the whole year. We completed all of our courses in half the time we normally would. It sounds hard when I say it out loud, and that's because it was hard. Not to mention, our home and workspace became one. So if this year didn't go exactly as planned, don't be hard on yourself. We can say something that no one else can. We completed all of grade 12 in the midst of a global pandemic. We fluctuated between hybrid learning and full online learning. Many of us had to teach ourselves more of the course material than ever before. It's not a secret that this past year has been far from the traditional senior year, but we have created memories that will last us a lifetime. Plus, when we are older and hear kids complaining about going to school, we can say, I went to school during a pandemic. Though season five is yet to be written, I see the blueprint for it all clearly. We are moving on to bigger and better things, actively proceeding towards the future we desire. We are applying our teachings we learned at STA every day. I am not referring to the academic teachings. I am referring to the life lessons we learned. We often forget the impact going to a Catholic school had on many of us. Though we all come from different religions and beliefs, we are bound by the moral teachings here at STA. Through the teachings, we learn to solve problems and make smart choices backed by our morality. We learn to never tolerate discrimination of any sort and ensure everyone is treated equally regardless of race and or sexual orientation. And last but not least, we learn to never give up on ourselves and never doubt all that life has in store for us. A huge thank you goes out to all of the teachers and staff who provided us with endless support and motivation over the years. We truly recognize and appreciate all that you've done for us more than you know. And of course, thank you to all the parents, guardians, siblings, and others who helped shape us to be the people that we are today. You've all transformed our lives completely and are the best role models we ever could have asked for. As for my fellow graduates, I wish you happiness and success from the bottom of my heart. You are all destined for great things beyond what you may realize today. Though this is the finale to our series, I do not doubt that this documentary is timeless. Congratulations, everyone. We finally made it. But never forget, once a Raider, always a Raider. Thank you. Mina Abdel Saeed. Ali Abusher. Sher. 
Lattice Acosta. Bujar Ega. Hannah Agselda. Sabrina Amadi. Georgina Alcantara. Sarah Al Nabi. Anumta Amir. Jelani Anderson. Aliana Andrade Ferreira. Amrit Aurora. Natalie Aruda. Julian Asaf. Edidahaj Awudu. Isaiah Ayade. Myrna Aziz. Leif Bahodi. Liana Bell. Brian Bennell. Jerawerk Burhanu. Tony Bashara. Will Blakely. Daniel Borges. Nolan Bordeaux. Isabella Boyd. Jake Franco. Rebecca Bristow. Noah Brosny. Catherine Brucage. Maximilian Brunetta. Andres Butrego. Savannah Burgess. Christian Burnett. Dylan Burns. Ashley Byrne. Claudio Bezhetaj. Gavin Cabral. Luke Caldwell. Layla Kalitri. Larissa Kalitri. Ethan Keiko. Morgan Kasha. Ella Caverson. Jessica Kaya Germain.
Stephen Chen. William Cheng. Jocelyn Chong. Emma Christie. Selena Chung. Kristen Clark. Amaya Comiso. Evan Cormier. Samantha Cox. Jin Wan Kui. Alyssa Da Silva. Caitlin Dennison. Emily Danko. Caitlin De Fritas. Tate Del Rizzo. Matthew Luis De Los Reyes. Matteo Di Michelle. Nathan De Rizzo. Thomas Diamandas. Gabrielle Diaz. Mary Defonso. Michael Doherty. Robert Doman. Simon Dowd. Dylan Dirtle Steep. Samuel Egbali. Mariana Arazo. Andrew Estrella. Tamaz Fedjervari Marissa Ferreira Eric Folino Olivia Frias Rachel Gale Peter Gangozo Arturo Garcia Daniela Garcia Matthew Garcia Erica Garner Spencer G. Salim Garayabe. Benjamin Gillum. David Goikaj. Carolina. Gomez
Diego Gonzalez. Joseph Graham. Aiden Gresser. Liam Griffin. Ethan Grimma. Maximus Gorgi. Jessica Hales. Faith Hamilton. Jack Hamilton. Megan Haraway. Chanel Haken. Emma Helmy. Quinn Henderson. Sydney Hendricks. Hannah Haydari. Aiden Hughes. Ravinder Hundel. Malika Hussain. Joshua Yacobelli. Jobert Imperial. Alessandra Ishak. Emily Ivankovic. Brian Jackman. Hassan Jassem. Jinny Jiung. Weiss Jing. Emeralda Kabuya. Abigail Kanalek. Simba Katifu Andrew Ketty Dina Khalifa Dominic Kendero Charlotte King James Kirkwood Mina Kirillos Jacob Kerber Kaylin Kong Nicole Kozilek Matthew Krowinski Jack Kukulik Rhea Kutavilla Mark Labuanon Serena Laka
Margaret Lang. Martin Lacostick. Jack Lamont. Michaela Langley. Hayden Lapko. Kiana Lawrence. Mark Lee. Can you Lee? Benjamin Leitao. Jocelyn Leon. Emma Leslie. Alyssa Leveille. Maxim Lewis. John Limbowan. Bruce Liu. Edward Lombo. Navar Maruf. Jack McAlpine. Emily Macher. Michael McMaster. Leonardo Perales. Bowen Mahoney. Maria Maldonado. Patricia Malikdem. Daria Mamahan. Luca Marquez. Rachel Marriott. Robert Martin. Emma Mascarenhas. Neve Matsuda. Valeska Megatier. Sean McCorkadale. Victoria McCullough. Ellie McGowan Hill. Kieran McLaughlin. Alessia Molinaro. Demiano Mujaj. Gurleen Multani. Luna Murrayed. Leo Murphy. Al Zayed Mohammed Nalado. Faith Nevado. David Gwen.
Hannah O'Brien. Aaron O'Halloran. Maya Oyeta Vinelli. Robin Olona Pacun. Nicole Obiaki. Mark Oriente. Alexandra Pablo Justin Pacheco Eric Pan Sin Yu Pao Andrew Paraninfo Megan Pask Sheila Patel Luca Peche Jacob Peterson Matthew Pedretti Jesse Peng Ambra Pepage Jacob Perdue Victoria Perez Nicholas Perry Jaden Petrelli Juan Felipe Plazas Hernandez Kian Pulati Paris Pulis Emma Putney Dakota Prempe Abigail Puskas Jacob Potts Nadia Rodriguez Santiago Rodriguez Jeremiah Radin Shreyas Ramachandran Regimantas Rauba Myrna Razuki Patrick Riley Justine Renault David Ripkoff Nayana Rippy Isabel Rocha Emily Rodriguez Matthew Rodriguez Joyce Rufai
Mark Rubach Flores. Mariam Ruggiero. Anthony Ruiz. Ryan Rutledge. Michael Socks. Carl Sater. Ibrahim Sahibi. Arhum Sajid. Myrna Salim. Anthony Samborski. Mark Schmid. Brooke Schmidt. Emma Schultz. Noah Scott. Audrey Seidel. Jason Serafin. Bonnie Severin. Suha Shakir. Roman Sharifi. Aisha Shazad. Christine Siao. Janica Siguenza. Taryn Silvestre. Matea Skenderia. Lauren Smith. Jason Solomon. Lindsay Solis. Yuming Song. Lucas Springett. Estefano Stefan. Alicia Stevens. Asha Sooner. Samuel Swatuck. Joanna Tamayo. Hao Yang Tang. Victoria Taylor. Janae Thomas. Ava Thorne. Alan Teotuiko. Stephen Towsey. Danny Tran. Maya Tsipe. Juan Valencia.
Victoria Vasconcelos. Athena Vazdani. Sydney Verdun. Andre Vesovich. McKenna Vieira. Marco Vuksevich. Leila Vogan. Amanda Walchak. Alexander Wallace. Emma Walton. Kaizuo Wang. Charlotte Waterhouse. Rona Wigan. Wei Cheng Zhu. Lord Yusuf. Olivia Zax. Vanessa Zalwango. King Sire Zambrano. Haran Zhu. During their years at St. Thomas Aquinas, our graduates have accomplished many things and set many traditions for those who follow in their footsteps. Our tradition of the light ceremony celebrates these accomplishments. I now call upon one of our graduates, Ms. Emily Ivankovic, and one of our grade nine students, Ms. Naomi Ogunjabi, to come forward on behalf of all the students of St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Secondary School. As we, the graduating class of 2021, begin, begin another journey, now outside the walls of St. Thomas Aquinas, we wish to pass on the light to those who will follow us. It is a light of faith, for we discovered in our desire for knowledge and truth, a desire for God himself. It is a light of hope, for we have experienced through acts of service, a spirit of self-giving, that we can rescue our world from despair. And it is a light of love, for the friendship of years who have opened our hearts to the wonder and mystery of caring for one another. On behalf of our fellow students at St. Thomas Aquinas, we open both hands and heart to receive this light. We thank you, the graduating students of 2021, for the spirit you have brought to our school. Like this lamp that brings light to the darkness, we pray that you also, in your studies and f future endeavors, will shine as a light on a hilltop for all to see. Let us bow our heads and pray. God, our creator and guide, we praise you for your glory and thank you for your goodness in us. Look upon our graduates with your love. 
and bless them as they leave St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Secondary School. May your spirit guide them to use the gifts that you have given them for your glory and the good of all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.